my tutorial for an A5 planner cover with matching pen. When you receive your acrylic cover blank, it will come with this protective label type paper on the front and the back. Go ahead and peel the paper off the sides that you'll be decorating, but leave the other protective side on. This will help a lot when we're all done decorating and it's time to clean up the excess epoxy that may leak over the side and in the notebook holes. To prep your cover, scut them up with a sanding block, and in my case, I'm using one of my 80 grit orbital sander discs. Then I'll clean them off with some 91% alcohol and a paper towel. Now that our covers are prepped, we're ready for the first step. For my design, I saw this gorgeous nail art on Pinterest and decided to recreate it into my planner cover. You can use these same techniques for a tumbler, which I'm pretty sure I'll be making for myself so I have a full set. I need my background to be white, so I'm mixing Snow White dispersion color into my epoxy and applying it to my covers. You can also spray paint your covers and then seal it, but I'm killing two birds with one stone and doing it this way. But you can definitely spray paint instead. Let your first layer cure and then we'll be ready to start our background. To add some depth, I'll be creating our background with mica powders mixed with epoxy first, let cure, then I'll be adding alcohol inks on top. This will really give my colors depth. Now Vanessa, can I go ahead and just do the inks now instead of this extra step? You absolutely can, but you guys know I'm extra and how much I love to add depth to my pieces, but you can absolutely skip this step if you like. Now I'm calling this a planner cover tutorial because it's what I specifically needed, but you can also turn these acrylic blanks into journal covers, diary covers, teacher planners, a notebook, lots of possibilities. Let your mica layer cure, then we'll be ready to add our inks. When adding my inks, I love to use coffee filters. I've also used makeup sponges in the past, but I've been too lazy to go to the Dollar Tree to get more, and I refuse to pay more on Amazon. So coffee filters it is, and they work just fine for me. I dab the inks on, dilute them with alcohol, then pat onto the surface, and then I blow the inks to help spread them around. Normally, I just blow the inks using my mouth, but for this tutorial, I'm using a straw so you can see what I'm doing instead of the back of my big old noggin.
Let your inks dry and then seal with a coat of epoxy. For some added sparkle, I also added some fairy dust mica powders into my epoxy and applied it all over. And for just the top portion, I added some PDB Studio glitters to really make my background shine. I'll be doing something different for the bottom in the next step. This layer cure and then we'll be ready to add our background leaves. For the leaves that are kind of shadowed in the background, I'm using water slide paper. This way they will be nice and transparent and give me the shadowed look I'm trying to achieve. To apply, I like to wet my surface first to help with removing bubbles, then use a silicone face mask brush to smooth them out. I let my water slide dry overnight because it was my last step before I called it a day, but usually I just let my water slide dry for about an hour or so, then seal with epoxy. I've already added a layer of epoxy to my cover and now I'm popping the bubbles with my torch. To add some extraness, I'm adding Annabelle to my epoxy and applying it just to the bottom. It really adds some whimsy to the piece. Can you skip this step? Yes, but come on. It's so pretty. Let cure and then we'll finish adding the rest of our vinyl. Seal your vinyl with a coat of epoxy and set aside to cure. While it does, let's make our pen. For my pen, I'm using a Papermate black gel pen. I twist off the little clip thingy, sand until smooth, remove the inside pieces, and then put those pieces to the side. Be sure to scuff up your pen all over so you give your resin something to grab onto. I'm using an old chopstick to put the pen thingy cover case thing on. <laughs> for when I spray paint and I'll also be keeping it on there for when I'm doing the rest of the pen. But you can also use a straw or whatever you have on hand. For my pen, I'm using UV resin from CC DIY as well as their UV lamp, but any UV lamp will do. Just know that some lamps are more powerful than others, so when I tell you that I placed a pen under the lamp for four minutes, you may not need to do it that long with another UV lamp. So check your pen between the time increments to check if it's cured.
I'll be doing the same steps for the pin that I did with the notebook cover, except for the addition of the Annabelle chunky glitter. I also left space to add my name in the future, but for now, I left the top portion bare. I let the UV resin cure for four minutes after each application and for six minutes after the final coat because I used a tad more to be sure my pin was nice and smooth. Once your pin is cured, you can put your pin back together and your super cute pin will be all done. Now that our cover is cured, we can remove the back protective pieces and put it all together.
That's it guys. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. A huge thank you to all my Patreon and channel members. Your support is literally everything. Have fun making your covers and pens and I'll see you again next time.